Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. Who's the head honcho around here? Hi! Who are you? Well, sir, my name is Stephen Crowder, and these here are the, uh, uh, Mug Club Z's from Lighter with Crowder, late night comedy of salvation to salve the soul. And we hear you might have a platform for us to upload our videos to. Well, that all depends. You boys do conservative videos? Uh, sir, we, we, we are a cup. Uh, let's all accept our cup, uh, our cup, uh, um, all accept our half Asian lawyer standing in the corner over there. Well, I really don't do conservative videos. I'm looking for more SJW socialism material. Well, we'll just have started featuring five Young Turk videos every day, deplatforming everybody else. So thanks for stopping by. Well, sir, Mug Club and Lotto Crowder have been steeped in socialism. Heck, you silly with it, ain't you, Z? Hell, they don't. That's right. I'm, we ain't really conservatives. I'll accept that half Asian lawyer standing in the corner over there. I, I have a show in constant sorrow. It's ain't true. Day. I've been shadowed, oh, demonetized. Notifications won't work for days. Notifications won't work for days. For three long years, I've been in trouble. Shadow bang. It's classified borderline. Then I hired a man who was half Asian. He practiced law, that's what they say. Now he sticks it to those big tech. He puts the lips in litigate. He puts the lips in litigate. And demonetized. Called a, I actually had a full-grown male friend who would eat with a spoon like this. No one had ever taught him this because his parents were in prison. <laughs> oh. Nice to meet you, Josh. Uh, <laughs> we have Anthony wow. Kumia. You oh, won't wow. be getting gifts for Christmas. Oh. Anthony Kumia uh, on the show today. Ted Cruz will be uh, back later in June. You had to reschedule. We oh, apologize. Yeah, Teddy. Uh, we have a seven plus one today. Boom. We have a so bunch much. of news to get to. So we'll be discussing stuff. universal basic income. Uh. So before I introduce everybody, uh, let me ask you this. Um, are you worried uh, about automation technology killing jobs. What's your biggest employment concern going forward? That'll determine, hopefully, kind of where you line up on universal basic income. And how old are you? We realize we have enough people watching this that we can do actual polls with Ooh, legitimate oh, sample really? sizing. That's true. Yeah, Quarter Black true. Garrett is doing What's the overlays. We have Audio Wade. Uh, Half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond is here because uh, we're going to get copyright struck anyway, so oh, might as well have him around. Yeah. It's just really just like a speed <laughs> dial in person. <laughs> Pentelis is here. Two Drink Minimum Podcast. Wow. Happy to be back. Glad to have you. N.G. Morgan Jr. Wine of the day. Wine of the day is Palermo. 
Palermo, Palermo. Cab. Yeah, this guy on the front has universal basic income too. What is that? I don't see. Yeah, he's kind of kind of dead. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so. okay. Oh, okay. Kind of like you. your bit. We should cancel one of the wow. day. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's sad. There's I'm no sorry. reason for it anymore. We should just cancel. So how much does this guy drink? They're always empty when he brings them. This is yeah, true. true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't don't hate. I saw What's, behind the studio just chugging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which also makes it even more uncomfortable because that means he recorks it. Uh, like, how is that? But there's, there's yeah. a cork on it. That's a completely empty bottle. Good business. You're like that Asian guy in sour grapes. How dare you? Say Liberation. all Asians. Yeah, I don't know. I don't no, know. True. I don't trust them. Don't you Zephyr. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. I only trust uh, the good half. Kind of like one of the Olsen twins. One Just of the, the waist evil, up, okay. right? Just the waist up. All right. Leading the news, Democratic frontrunner, of course, Joe Biden. Uh, he was speaking to the American Federation of Teachers, and he forgot his pledge to apparently respect personal mm. space. Oh, no. You ought to go back and talk to them. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. no. <laughs> and by the way, that's one of the things that's a dangerous idea. You know, as these guys will tell you, I'm not always their favorite subject. It's like a Swedish bassoon oh <laughs> with a biracial wow. child. <laughs> we actually, um, we obtained exclusive audio as oh. intercepted by Vice President Biden's earpiece, and it seems things only got worse for, for the control room. Ooh. I'll bet you're as bright as you're good looking. I tell you. Okay, okay Vice President Biden, that's great. Turn on the Trump camera number four. I can't the shot. I can't too far away. Journalism. Whoa. Oh. Okay, Joe, it seems like if she's a college student, that's great. We really need to pick up the college vote. Please, let's get a clear shot of her. Camera number four. I'm telling you, I can't. I'm sick on a tripod. <laughs> okay, great. Joe, bring her to where we can see her on camera. And, oh, sh. Okay, over here. Okay, no, she's a little girl. Let's, Joe, get off of it. Get off of it. Let's get off. Just, no, don't don't touch her. Don't touch her. Uh, don't. He's touching the kid. Okay, camera number four, get off of this, get off of this. I can't have to, this is news, it's my job. Camera number four, so help me God, I will send you back to film school. Joe, don't miss up. Camera number four. This is news, I have to cover it. You, Joe, let go, please, get her off, Joe. Joe, get her off. That was unnecessarily <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> It's like he can't control wow. himself. He really like, I know I shouldn't do this, but she's so fly. Like, <laughs> <can't help it. laughs> oh my gosh. What's the over under on how many times he's going to do this? Like, the guy knows every camera in the room is on him, and he yep. still can't he help can't, himself. Can't help every <laughs> six year old girl, just understand, he I wants to stop. put y'all back in chains in a oh, sex dungeon. It is oh, disgusting. Oh, oh. Dang. I like Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, RBG, as they call her on Netflix, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, <laughs> she came out the other Trendy. day and uh, she said that pregnant women are not mothers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Ginsburg's dissent on Box versus Planned Parenthood, Indiana, Kentucky, she wrote, quote, a woman who exercises her constitutionally protected right to terminate a pregnancy is not a mother. This is in response to Clarence Thomas. You probably mm -hmm. know this. They're a uh, half Asian bill. You're mm -hmm. probably a fan of uh, Clarence huh. Thomas. Yeah. Following the laws. Yeah, you would think so. Uh, when reached, actually, uh, for further comment, uh, the justice couldn't provide any because she's dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. CNN's Jim Acosta. <laughs> is that, that's not slander libel, is it there, Bill? Oh, no. I mean, Satire. I, she's dead actually, can mean so many things. Wait, she's actually dead, right? I'm <laughs> quite certain. I, I think so, yes. Actually. I like how she looks. She looks like a cartoon snail librarian. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what she's hiding under the robe is a large shell. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. What's this large appendage? That is remarkably specific. <laughs> that's what I think of when I see her. Oh, that's not a healthy. snail librarian. Someone's yeah. been making a trip to Colorado's Magic Mushroom District. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He doesn't need to. He's in Montreal. Those things come yeah. out of vending yeah. machines. It's everywhere. For the little rooster egg. Roosters don't lay eggs. I don't care. Show's already gone off the rails. That's yeah, too late. Just CNN. Jim Acosta. Uh, he's Yay. now declared that media news. Neutrality is no longer a possibility under President Trump. <laughs> this comes from his new book, The Enemy of the People, A Dangerous Time to Show the Tooth Truth in America. I'm still laughing at the snail letter. <laughs> <thing. laughs> this is good. Uh, when reached for comment, the head of CNN's Pakistan Bureau was being beheaded. So oh, that wasn't yeah, necessarily to comment then, yeah. And yeah. he admitted Acosta. He admitted to grandstanding and showboating. By the way, contradicting literally everyone in the media <laughs> who's defended Acosta. President-elect Trump today told CNN's Jim Acosta that his organization amounts to fake news. <laughs> yes. It is uh, our observation <laughs> yeah. that its correspondents follow journalistic standards <laughs> and that neither they nor any, any other journalists should be subjected to belittling and delegitimizing by the president-elect of the United yes, States. Yes, they should. president the in Iraq from Baghdad, and he actually went to Cuba on Cuban soil and pressed Raul Castro about the human rights violation. This is what he does, yeah. and this is what oh every boy. great reporter <laughs> oh does. Boy. He's got those you politician speak thumb. To power, oh boy, yeah. The knuckle. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter, go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts well, his Well, I'm not a big fan of, of yours either, so. <laughs> <laughs> See? Uh, 
It's like oh, the chicken or the egg. Does he yeah. now say that he needs to grandstand and lie, or does he always did he always uh, do that, or is he just doing it now because a president basically called him a? I don't know. <laughs> I think he's a little pissed off about all this. You know, look, the unbiased truth would help here just a little bit, right? If that's what we were getting. We're not saying that this is Nazi Germany and you can't have an opinion. Right. We're just saying no. that you're very biased. Yeah. Although Helen Thomas would like it to be Nazi Germany. <laughs> send, send the Jews back. No. Do you not remember that? No, no one remembers this? I do remember what? that. I don't remember. Helen that. Thomas? You don't remember she yeah. said, wow. they should go back to Poland. You're like, oh, you crazy wow. old wow. Yeah. Wow. Got it. I just amazing to me the, indignis, the indignance of these people. It's like saying, hey, I think your neighbor might be a, a, a pedophile. It's like, how dare you? I mean, he sleeps with kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is that. But it kind of wow. proves the point just a little I mean, it's literally like you watched Leaving, Leaving Neverland, which I think is like a quote yeah. from that. Movie. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I like that he wrote a book, though, because he has no crazy. so unfunny. It's like if Plywood wrote a book. Yes. It's not interesting. It's not <laughs> an interesting guy. Look at the grain of the wood. Oh, my gosh. It's a two by four. Yeah. Ooh, Does Plywood maybe. have a grain? All right, switching to international news. Uh, a church offered to cover up a cross and the image of Jesus for Ramadan. Going back to the original reasons yeah, you know. yeah. for church. <laughs> Yeah. To appease traditionalism. Wow. traditionalism. To appease wow. the guy who said that Christ lied about pretty much everything. Uh, you know, <laughs> there, there's a right way and a wrong way. Yeah, for you would outreach. think so. <laughs> uh, the plan was to quote invite men from a nearby mosque to use the church as a place of prayer. This happened, uh, of course, across the pond. Uh, I think joining us on the line right now yeah. is the Church of England pastor, Reverend Nigel Smith, to to, to discuss oh. it. Re Reverend Smith, are you there? Yes, Stephen. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Uh, sure. Yeah. Would you mind for a moment just keeping Can it we, down? I'm um, just gonna be trying. Hello, Lord. That one off the rails oh, pretty yeah. wow. Yeah, that yeah. was... That yeah. didn't take much time. Should have seen it coming. Couldn't yeah. have landed any other way. Nope. Um, nope. <laughs> no, problem. I was doing the math in my head. There was no other way that yeah, could yeah. have landed. Zero percent. Shame on you for yeah. thinking yeah. so. so. Uh, finally, this is our final story. It'll bring us to 7 plus 1, then talking about universal basic income, which Boom. I'm sure a lot of you support because you're millennials. And though even though you're conservative, <laughs> your desire for free hey, stuff... put us all in the same bucket, supersedes it. Don't I put you it. in that exact same bucket. I'm definitely Shameful. in the bucket. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right there. Well, yeah, it's true. The Yang Gang. Uh, finally, uh, we have... a street gang, Bill? <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. It's amazing. <laughs> the best and most the, dangerous dumplings. They're in a street gang. <laughs> and the, the, initi the initiation is voting for somebody who gets 0% of yeah. the Democratic yeah. nominee. Zero house. ANC support, yeah. 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 But also really stealing is. a Grand Torino. I don't know why they had all those kids to act. That, that is proof positive <laughs> that Asians can't act. Sorry, Bill. Wait, is it a question? No, I don't think it's Have a question. I think it was, there was just recently, did you see this video Statements. where they oh, did this parody of Aladdin and hoping for a diverse cast, hoping for more Asian actors? Oh. And I was sitting there going, like, listen, at a certain point, there has to be a meritocracy. Well, yeah. Your Oscar nominated films, and that's a really shadow category with foreign. <laughs> it's still embarrassing. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't a parody, it came out last week. <laughs> yes. It's in theaters, yeah. <laughs> it's real. Uh, okay, hey, so final no, no, I want to take, take this, just a real quick point, yeah. however. Keanu Reeves is part Asian. Hey. Yeah, oh, that's true. Well. Do not even talk about I, I know. national Do you know what his favorite is. film is? Who? Bill Richman? Bill. Half Asian lawyer Bill Richman? No. I'm proud to say it's Constantine. <laughs> oh, no, I do what? know this. That's I'll back that up. Good. I, I like that it. up. I like it's a good movie, Thank but you. I didn't expect Thank that. You. Look, no, your number one is The Prestige. Oh, yeah. And yeah, number yeah. two is Constantine. Top five is Constantine. Truman Show. Number one Prestige, why? Explain your rationale. Ooh, Hugh Jackman, man. He is... Amazing. He's Not a just, the, just the, he the like writing is great. Him? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I liked him in The Greatest Showman. He had a, quite a voice. Okay, yeah. and then yeah. explain Constantine. How about Wolverine. I mean, it's just I don't know. It's, it's whack. Fun. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. He just it's, have horrible taste. Uh, it's interesting. I think that's people are clearly established. I was not yes. clearly established. Okay, we have to get to another <laughs> church story. Uh, a church they agreed to host drag queen story time. Oh. After the city uh, library canceled the event. This is where Ryan Hart comes in. He's the pastor of a church that decided to rent out a room at the library for the event. I thought, well, why can't our church just host it? My reasoning and the reasoning of Open Cathedral in having this event is to keep kids safe. And kids are safer <laughs> when they know that they can love themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We should point out the event was right. canceled after Drag Queen Storytime in Houston was found to have hired registered sex offenders. Oh, oh. Please. Yes. Ooh. Safe Ooh. in the arms wow. of the Joe Biden. What happened to a potluck? You have to cover up Jesus yeah. and invite people for Ramadan and drag oh queen story gosh. time. Can't oh. you guys do a Bible study? Jeez, come on. Anyway, that brings us to this week's 7 Plus 1. Yo, forgot Stefan. 
one in the chamber. Yeah. They always forget the every one in the time. chamber. Uh, oh this week is every seven time. plus one top drag queen story time books. The most mm. popular Ooh. stories that they read to children at these events. Oh, that's good. Uh, we'll all have a chance. Number seven, Harry Potter and the Sex Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> yeah, that seems. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Tiny mm, prisoner. That's terrible. Number six, by Curious George. Which <laughs> don't oh, oh, theme. Oh, wow. oh, come on. Wow. wow. Hungry. Pentelis, uh <laughs> why don't you make us in with number five? Again, top drag queen storybooks for children. Yeah. yeah. All the places you'll go. Mm. Just don't tell your parents. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so terrible. <laughs> I love how my lawyer takes a sip of his water yeah. at that point. Uh, he's not, he's yeah, not in this. It's not water. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's all get our hands dirty. Num uh, number four, <laughs> half Asian Bill. The grooming tree. Oh, that was it. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. oh, 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 yeah, that oh, makes a lot I more sense. That was just so accurate. Yeah. Too true. See, I thought it was I thought it was the original title, but no. It's number just, uh, Joe Biden. number three, in case we hadn't lost the remaining half of you. <laughs> <laughs> if you give a mouse a butt plug, yeah, this is not <laughs> our it's the drag queen story it's time. Not wow. yeah. This yeah. is not us. This is not us. That's perverse. It's, who would do that? <laughs> Reporting yeah. the news. You're letting us in your church? Uh, <laughs> you decide. Gerald, give us number two. James <laughs> is giant <laughs> oh. Gerald. Mm. Dude. Dude. That's like a George O'Keefe <laughs> painting right there. Oh. <laughs> it's because we're going on a theme. Uh, and the number one drag queen story time book, Penn Tellus. The little engine that could keep his mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh gosh. wow. Uh, and of course, oh, the plus one oh. is Bernstein Bears. Yeah, that seems almost like oh, all that makes yeah. sense. Uh, all that makes sense to people who are watching that listen to That uh, concludes this week's 7 Plus One. You forgot the fun in the chamber. I apologize yeah. for yeah. putting you in that situation there. It's not, it, it was them, it was not yeah. us. We just have yeah. to tell you guys. You know, these aren't the books that are getting banned at local libraries, right? No, right. they no, are. These are the ones that are it's there. It's definitely not these. Not from the local that was Costco. Oh. That, that was hilarious. The guy was like, I, no, children are safer when they can turn. Are you serious? I he was going to say. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Ooh. So are you about to say something oh. there, uh, Half Asian Bill, before that necessary break? Uh, that, that, was, was, that was an amazing yeah. break. Yeah. 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 Witchcraft? Yeah. Epic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Witchcraft. Wow. It's all ball bearings Magic. now, Clark. If you see, if, women out there, if, you, uh, if you're if you dating a guy who uses a fidget spinner, <laughs> kill him. Uh, okay. With the fidget in. spinner. <laughs> Again, question of the day is, what's your view on universal basic income? I know some conservatives have actually supported this, but I think it needs Boom. to be understood contextually as to so why some might. I will say this. There is a scenario where I could be on board with it. But uh, back to you guys, what you're, you're, the question I want to hear answered from you, how concerned are you about automation? Mm. Um, and how old are you? What's your biggest concern getting into the job market? That seems to be why this is gaining a lot of traction. Yeah. Universal yeah. basic income. Of course, you have the Yang gang, Bill knows, uh, and uh, Cortez talking about it recently exploration of a universal basic income were not all proposed in 2016, they are proposed in 1940 by the President of the United States. When you're here today, you heard something like this, there's an Asian man running for president who wants to give everyone $1,000 a month. Bill? <laughs> universal basic income is a policy where every citizen in a country gets a certain amount of money to meet his or her basic needs, no questions asked. So in my plan, the Freedom Dividend, every American adult would receive $1,000 a month starting at age 18. You, you know you're, you know oh, you're robotic when they spruce your interview up with a xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Does someone have a recorder? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Yang. <laughs> 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 Is that a Vufazella? I have a <laughs> xylophone. That's a great word. Wait, what? So for people who don't know, universal yeah. risk income, as uh, Andrew Yang is proposing, is uh, $1,000 a month for every American citizen Period. That's the idea That's uh, funded by the taxpayers. Cory Booker, Kamala Harris have been pushing similar plans. Yeah. And then, of course, the wonderful Now This News. Uh. Uh, they recently published a video explaining why it's a great idea. Spoiler, I disagree. But uh, <laughs> let's go to the tail of the tape from Now This. I believe we need a universal basic income in the United States. A universal basic income is a direct cash transfer. Who that is, you? we give people a set amount of money per month, no strings attached. Poor. People will be no. free to buy groceries, diapers, pay mm -hmm. rent, save for an emergency, Crack. pay for medical care, or <laughs> simply take their family to a movie. Crack, heroin, methamphetamine, illegal <laughs> yeah, firearms, you know. sky's the limit. Anything. <laughs> 
I'm you can't get a, yeah, you can't get a tax deduction, which would essentially be putting cash in your pocket. This is not a, you can use cash instead to right. buy drugs. This would be yeah, a yeah. great. Uh, this would not be a good day actually for Asians. You have no. first Yang and then that guy. Yeah, not I mean, good. Indian. No, I assume. That's assume not I think out. he was. No, Indian no, 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 no. I'm the Yin. They're the Yang. Is this how it works? <laughs> it's true, yeah. On the other side of the coin. Careful. Oh. Gerald's going to try and get in on that action and uh, say something Boom. unfunny. Uh, so before we get to the untenable <laughs> economic <laughs> undergirding for the argument, let me ask you a few questions here, okay? Because the economics, were, they, again, they don't provide any, any statistics or data. We'll do our best not. to try yeah. and fill in the blanks. Thanks now this, like 50 million plays yeah. on Facebook. It's just claims. Oh. Well, there was nothing in that claim. It was like Gerald's wine bottles. That exactly. was a completely <laughs> empty <laughs> claim. Oh. <laughs> So let's just walk you through the logic trail first, okay? I have a couple of questions, Socratic method. You give everyone $1,000, no questions asked, okay? Do you think that would make most citizens more or less likely to save? Do you think that would encourage people to be more or less likely to plan for retirement? More or less likely to strive for a better job and achieve some kind of social mobility? This, these are the first questions you need to answer. Yeah, and, and by the way, you can never, ever, ever end it. Government programs are notoriously hard Who to Who are you, get Taylor of, Swift? Right? You ever, can never, ever, 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 <laughs> ever end it. You can't end it, right? And more, it's more likely to increase. So let's say we started $1,000. The next guy is going to come along because yeah. I want to get elected by giving people free stuff. Let's give them 1200 bucks a month. Yeah. I'm better than that guy. <laughs> Imagine that, yeah. instating $1,000 for every single person and then burning at the tiller of that ship. Yeah. The $1,000 a month universal basic income has not increased with inflation. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's yeah. here. Yes, exactly. It's like fight for fifteen. This would happen. Uh, I have yeah. an idea. What, what oh. if you could tell me if there's if this makes any sense? It doesn't. What if? <laughs> what if instead of giving people random money like a thousand dollars, what if you would just lower taxes in these big areas oh. so that they would have a thousand dollars more at the wow. end of the there's at a the end problem of the month, the instead of, of giving segment. that money to the government? You, you know just cut off our future. Now this clip at the knees. Oh, no. <laughs> you should have watched it first. Because they we will, address that we in will address full. Well, oh, they don't want to do that. They don't want to cut taxes. Well, they address mm. it very effectively. Your argument is mute. Uh, <laughs> mute. It's moot. moot. I know it's moot. 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 I accidentally said mute. <laughs> okay? Get off my back! It's moops. By the way, hit the notification bell uh, because subscriptions don't mean anything, apparently. <laughs> uh, Bill thinks his client is very unstable right now. Half Asian. Mm, Bill. No more than normal. No. <laughs> he did grow up with a half Asian mother. And by the way, bookmark the page. Uh, and Mud Club. Lot of yeah. com slash Mud Club because we are being hit with the, uh, yeah, the false copyrights. Yeah. iTunes leave us a rating. All right. Yeah. Point number two, this is something that this is, these are sort of, I guess, this is one of the premises that they base the universal basic income yeah. on. So instead of point, let's say these are kind of the tenets of what they believe here. Uh, by the way, I didn't say tenants as in renters. Mm. <laughs> okay, it's I understand it's moot. All right. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Fake <laughs> news. <laughs> I don't want it. The last thing I want is to be on a salon Corrected, headline. Yeah. You know, he said oh, I'm moot. I am being vilified <laughs> while the pedophile gets a parade. I've four already times. commented about your moot <laughs> mute. Yeah. Literally, uh, Bill will clean it up in a release after. Trust <laughs> me, you're in good hands. Okay, they make the <laughs> argument that work doesn't pay. One, work doesn't pay. People often work one, two, or three jobs and still live in poverty. In fact, work pays so little that a majority of Americans don't have $1,000 in the bank for an emergency. 95 million Americans live in poverty, and one in three parents can't afford diapers for their children. First, we have to recognize that work doesn't pay. No matter how long and how much people work, they're not getting by, and they're certainly not getting ahead. So first, oh. you have to listen to me when I repeat these completely empty claims. <laughs> <laughs> right. For step two, yeah. see step one. Correct. But they claim Americans work two, three jobs, 95. There's, again, there's nothing in that claim. I could not find any statistic that reflects 95 million Americans living in poverty, working yeah. multiple jobs. It's demonstrably false. The number is 39.7 million, according to the ultra-biased US census. I want to make sure that you understand. <laughs> yep. Exactly. This is the modern day Herod headcount. <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, you hit your light there. I thought you had I something to say. I didn't All right. hit anything. You're just trying. I did not. It was the lawyer. And this is something else we need to understand. When we talk about poverty, again, it's 39 million. It's not 95 million. Right. The, again, this changes it, right? If you think someone's working three jobs and 95 million people yeah. working three jobs are in poverty, well, the number's actually right. under 40 million. And by the way, the standards of poverty, they have multiple vehicles, air conditioning, widescreen TVs, yeah. internet. I understand it's widescreen. I said widescreen. <laughs> Get off my back! <laughs> 
By the way, it was nice that they didn't have any kind of uh, tag. I even looked at the very bottom. There was no source listed for the 95 million. Of course not. It's now this. And you go, wait, can you have a source list? Now that. (laughs) (laughs) Look over here. It's like the prestige. Yes. We have a quarter. Now the prestige. No sources. By the way, it's not it's not about just material goods. You wouldn't have had any of those things if you're the wealthiest person on earth 80 years ago. And people no. say, oh, that doesn't, that, so you're saying because they have an iPhone, it's not hard? No, I'm talking about the kinds of opportunities afforded to everyone because yeah. of advancements in technology. I've used this example before. Imagine if you could go back into the Civil War. Did you ever have this fantasy as a kid? Like, mm. yeah. I could go back with an M16 and grenade launcher. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bye, Hopper. He just, I think, <laughs> like, I, I, think uh-huh. I spilled he's some out. water I'm on him out. a little bit. Uh, jerk. Imagine, th- no one would be able to stand a chance. Yeah. Oh, now he's back. <laughs> <laughs> he's going over to Bill. <laughs> he's gonna Hopper, don't go better. over to Half Asian Bill. They Yay. serve you. Oh. I will protect you, Hopper. This festival's dedicated to you. This show this is, is not a good one. Video. Uh, <laughs> great. <laughs> this is great, Stephen. What are you talking about? People <laughs> love dogs. The worst dogs. part is, we'll be able to see in our analytics, that's the portion that yeah. everyone will rewind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't Let's matter go. how much work we put in. Like, ah, the Hopper. dog. He's oh, cute. Yeah. Dogs and monkeys. People like love a, them. It's true. <laughs> Oh, okay. yeah. Imagine if you could travel back. Let's just go a little bit more recent. <laughs> yeah. 25 years with an iPhone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, you could be more productive than Bill Gates along with the entire staff <laughs> of Bill Gates. You could be more productive <laughs> than all of them. It's not that you have a cell phone or a microwave, right. but you have access to technology that gives you more opportunities and more abilities to make efficient use of your time and advance your financial, your social, your educational status. That's the point that we're talking about here. Yeah, and, and yeah. all of this is built on this false premise that all work is equal, right? He's saying, oh, this work doesn't pay. Well, some some jobs don't pay very well. They're, they're meant to be entry-level jobs for you to work up to other jobs. Right. If you yeah. don't like it, go out and get the skills that are required to get to a different job. If that requires you to work two jobs, sometimes you have to do that. I understand that. That not all work produces And you know what else is important? Same. They're trying to say, oh, that's because you're you're an elitist. No, no, hold on a second. No. Trash men jobs pay better. You yeah. think it's beneath you. Mm. Right, exactly. Right? Being a shift manager at a fast food franchise pays better. You think it's beneath you. We're yeah. telling you there's a job surplus. A lot of them, but they don't all pay super well. Right. Not all of them, but some of them do. Yeah. yeah. The, whole, the whole premise is that we, if you produce something, and they're going to argue with this left and right, if you can produce something valuable with your time, then I will give you my money right. that I have earned to do it for me. And, and they go on to make that point that many Americans don't have $1,000 in their savings yeah. account, right? As, and this is evidence of work not paying. Yeah. This is emblematic of the leftists at now this because like many of the proposed tax plans and economic plans coming from the left, it doesn't take into account <laughs> what? Economic. What? What, men? Mm-hmm. What? Uh, I think uh, we lost uh, half uh, Asian uh, Bill. Uh, what? He's, he's looking the at the dog. Bo- <laughs> I, I licked my lips. You're not playing with them. You're putting Whoa. on the dry rub. Stop it. <laughs> my God, it. I he's salivated. You teriyaki sauce. <laughs> you know this. It doesn't take into account spending. Oh, spending. Oh, now that's you're it. getting it. That was close. Everyone's Got understanding. It. Samsonite. I was Then way they off. go on to make this point. Again, There's. I'll let you know in what scenario I would be supportive of a universal basic income, but I it's not it. based on these false premises. Like right now, here, uh, I think it says still now this. Yeah, yes. this is now more, unfortunately. <laughs> we give corporations, they say, free money, but not, not the poor. But then why are we so reticent to give people money? Well, because in the United States, we wrongfully believe that if we help struggling people and communities, that they'll never help themselves. Instead, we give big corporations and billionaires that, free money right, because actually. we believe their wealth creates deservedness. So we keep giving more. What? What? Deserved? Again, is there what? any source, any evidence for that claim? None. First off, it's no. not remotely true that the United States gives nothing to the poor. Right. Currently drop about $1 trillion a year, okay? <laughs> Stephen, now, that's nothing. I know, that's it's, nothing. It's, it's a drop nothing. in the bucket to you. <laughs> Yeah, that's like yeah, one twentieth of the money. new green deal. I mean, <laughs> yes, like, that's true. That's basically, true. that's just half a paragraph. That's two lines yeah. if you take yeah. into account five. That's pages. just the farting cows. That's and it. They don't explain what they mean by give billionaires free money. If they're talking about government subsidies, loans for give, giving out money to corporations, right. uh, I'm against that. Every single conservative I know is against bailout money. Everyone yeah. here, show of hands. That, that, show of yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. Right no, no, no one here supports yeah. bailouts. Nope. Okay, no. good. We should find some common ground there. Now, that would be a good example. Obama giving $535 million to a solar energy company solar that declared energy. bankruptcy oh, right. without yeah. actually creating anything. Yeah. Subsidizing green energy to the tune of $39 billion a year. Oh I think gosh. we all have problems with that. The, G- the auto bailout. But yeah. I think people need to understand that a subsidy is very different from a tax break. Yeah. 
from saying, okay, we are going to not punish you as much if you bring these jobs <laughs> or you conduct this research yeah. on shore here. Yeah. Guess what? That's not the same as giving somebody money. I think we need to understand the difference. And you must uh, deal with that all the time in business law there, half Asian Bill. Well, I mean, you, you got to think about what is the theory of if you're going to give someone money versus you're going to, you know, let's say a tax break or something like that. Like, it, it's almost as if they're saying, well, it doesn't matter what form you give it in. As long as you give it, there's no consequence, right? You just give right. the money and everything will be fine. But there's no, what is the empirical data to support that this money is going to go in the right place right. or actually change anything. Right. right. And, and to, to drive this point home, by the way, but this killed Mitt Romney's campaign, but it was accurate. Almost half of all Americans don't pay federal yeah. income tax. Yeah. And here's something even more that I, I wish you would have clarified. If you look at income and taxes paid, okay, and you take into account federal transfers, that's a word they used, right? Like the one trillion yeah. government yeah. programs yeah. that I mentioned earlier, meaning what you give to people, welfare, food stamps. The bottom 20%, what would you think the bottom 20% in the United States pay? A lot of people say, well, they should pay less. Okay, right. so you think they're paying too much. What would be fair? Should they pay 20%, 15%, 10%, 2%? They pay negative 58% <laughs> when you take into account <laughs> wow. what they get in the form of transfers. The next income wow. brackets, all the way up to the middle 20%, they all get double digits of a negative tax rate. Wow. Mm. People in the top tax bracket, they pay over 30%. <laughs> and this is why whenever someone says, well, this is a tax cut for the rich, well, yeah, because they're the only one paying taxes. And by the way, top 20% is something like seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 in a joint income household. It's not that much. So it's right. un important to understand, this is a tax break for the wealthy. Well, you get you pay negative 50. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're, what would you like, negative 100%? I don't right? know. I don't. This what do we have to do to make you happy? And, and you're right. The only people that can pay taxes are the people that are earning an income to do it. Or I'm sorry, that only can get a tax break are the ones that are paying taxes. So with the corporations, when you look at them, they always paint them as this big evil villain we shouldn't give them any tax breaks. That's how you compete for their business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can locate wherever they would like AOC, thanks for the Amazon, 25,000 jobs, <laughs> billions of dollars later. That's how this works. They didn't pay anything in corporate tax. What about the income tax? Yeah. There were billions of dollars what about, what paid payroll? to the government in taxes. Yeah. Payroll yeah. taxes. Payroll taxes that they would have been paying to it's, New York it's State. One, it's one of the biggest lies. Go uh, just just Google it, okay? Oh, just, uh, just YouTube right. search. Right. Actually, don't YouTube search because it won't show up on YouTube. It's already <laughs> no, it been won't. removed, I'm sure, demonetized. Yeah, yeah, uh, where we dealt with the, the biggest myths of the rich uh, corporate, the rich in corporations right. not paying anything. It's not true that Amazon has paid nothing in taxes. That's billions no. of dollars annually in the last few years. Tons. All right. Uh, another uh, sort of one of the fulcrums of their argument here is, is um, that universal basic income will boost the economy. Here's how they explain it. I believe we can lift millions of people out of poverty with the universal basic income You're wrong. and give people the independence they deserve okay. with a monthly cash disbursement. Free Giving cash. people cash free. will create an economic stimulus. When you give people money, they spend the money, which helps boost small business and government <laughs> revenues. Recent Nobel Prize winning work suggests that the best way to reduce poverty and help people Ooh. is to actually give them agency. And this means giving people money. You can afford universal basic income. You now, give? Well, for perspective, the federal government just passed. No, you know what? Cut it. Cut it. I can't, I can't do it anymore. Hold on a second. Give people agency by giving. How about you give people agency by not taking their money? <laughs> How about letting them keep their money? That's a good place to start. Yeah, right. They're talking about, you say trickle-down economics doesn't work, where the idea is if people would keep more money, and we're not just talking about the wealthy, but the idea people don't understand when you look at economists like Art Laffer, the more yeah. people keep, the more they will spend. What you are saying is take, 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 don't let them keep, right. and then give them money to spend. You acknowledge that if people have more pocket change, they'll spend it, that's good for the economy, but you believe that you give people agency by taking their sh and saying, by the way, here's a little bit of your sh back? Yeah. <laughs> you should be happy with that. By the way, let's change it from universal basic income. This is wealth redistribution, period. Yeah, yeah. of course. That's all it is, is taking is. from somebody else that has a lot and giving it to someone who doesn't. That's it. It, it doesn't take into account human nature and in, in, in the work no, incentive. No, 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 it's not, not even a new idea. From 1968 to 1980, the U.S., they actually led a few trials. Um, I think they called one of these programs uh, a negative income tax. There's some clever well, wordplay there. what it is. And what did they find? <laughs> you guys know what they found? They found that if you gave people free money, surprise, they worked dramatically less. Oh. Among men, 43%. Less and they were far more likely to be unemployed. <laughs> so, surprising. Buffoon said he actually said, We'll collect more of this money and give it to the government. But the government's already giving this money out. It's yeah. not what are you talking about? <laughs> we want more money. <laughs> hey, there was something true he said there, though. What? That Hello. They're going to give the money, and then it's going to boost small businesses. And drug dealers are small businesses. This is that's true. That so is true. I mean, we got people gotta playing the lottery. Truth, you yeah. know? Every thousand dollar check. And there's a out. magic mushroom shop owner yeah. in Colorado going, "I'm freaking out, man. This is my <laughs> ticket in. It's too much. This is my ticket in. Why is that librarian so slimy? <laughs> 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 oh my God, she's dead. <laughs> she's dead. <laughs> true. She 
shouldn't be sitting on the bench. Uh, <laughs> the idea that they claim that the only way to make people independent is to give them money. It makes yeah. people more dependent. I just don't understand the logic. So, so, okay, in order to wean your son off of breastfeed, onto solid food, you're gonna keep your in his mouth forever? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. seems like a plan. I want him to start <laughs> eating peas. Well, really, how'd you get him on the path? Just my t <laughs> That doesn't that's seem like it. that's the most productive route. I just put a route. P on the bread. No, okay. No. And by the way, the argument they often bring up, I hear this a lot. Yeah, Yang this. gang. You know, you know what I'm talking about there, Happy oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they say They use Alaska as an example. Yeah. So this is something a lot of people, what about Alaska? I can already see it in the comments section. Hold on. You might want to delete that <laughs> comment you left four minutes Hold, ago. Yeah, no uh, it's a very small amount in Alaska, between $300 to $2,000 a year or so. Yeah, but, and, and mm. by the way, if we needed any other examples for this, this works really well with the Native American population. Very, yeah. very well. Yeah. Great results. At full employment, everybody's doing well. It's fantastic. Just look at Steven Seagal. <laughs> I am one. Also black from Brooklyn and a Jew from Detroit. And uh, a police officer. Yes, all of those things. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. By really, the way, really and bad. if you look at places that have done it on a larger scale, like Canada, Finland, they actually implemented, uh, they implemented, get off my back! <laughs> implemented, Steven? <laughs> Universal. Did you say implemented? Uh, oh, he needs to check out more books, but she's hushing him. <laughs> I don't know. This is a bad program. I like this. It's like SLC Punk. <laughs> yeah. Kind of the middle scenes there. In Canada, Finland, it failed. They were set to run yeah. a program in Canada, I think, for three years. Oh, yeah, I should just look at the overlay. Uh, it had to be shut down after 15 months. Oh. So fast. So fast it was shut yeah. down. You I didn't get any of it. <laughs> yeah. Your check is in the mail, sir. Sorry. In Finland, the program didn't help people get back to work. I have a direct quote from the Finnish. I don't know how to do a Finnish accent because they're uh, hey, insignificant they, on a global they, they, scale. Yeah. No one cares about you. <laughs> When people, <laughs> when compared to a control group who were not receiving the basic income, the test subjects given the money were not significantly more likely to have gotten back into employment. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Almost Science. seems like they can just sit around. I know. Also, by the way, unfortunately for them, the people at the end of the study um, were murdered by everyone in the control group. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That, that would affect it. The people who had does. their autonomy actually violated with their stuff mm. taken, right. they killed them. Huh. Yeah. We're very happy. That seems reasonable, though. Uh, yeah. Well, happy. Finland, I guess you have a new thing to be known for. So it's not <laughs> that bad. The next point, this is one that's really big, uh, and it's not ill-founded completely, automation. Yeah. Mm. Right. Many they, Americans, but, even those yeah. with six-figure incomes, are living check to check. And third, gains in productivity aren't being realized by average Americans. They're being hoarded by a few people at the top. Really? Automation and artificial intelligence will only accelerate what? this trend. I love how they just toss in automation and artificial intelligence. Like, hold on a second, we've seen automation really going back yeah. to the agricultural revolution. Right. Do you want people plowing fields with spoons? <laughs> <laughs> right, there's always been some we level, can do that. and then you can yeah. look at the industrial revolution. Yeah, absolutely. But then he just throws in AI. So we're like, what? Alexa? No. <laughs> oh, Skynet. No. And it was listening in on me, man. <laughs> I mean, the argument there is 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 to say, well, yeah, if you want to just create jobs and, cre and artificially create a market, yeah. just start destroying all computers. You know what yeah. we should also do? Yeah. No electric grid. Yeah. yeah. Candle makers, man, that industry is going to boom. I mean, yeah. but you can artificially create that, or you can set up a system that deals with important education items, yeah. encouraging people to actually work and to be able to ha have the kind of persistence going to earn them the type of money that they're I interested in. Uh, and that's not to say that we can entirely eliminate poverty, but how is going to give this additional money to people who are definitively, based on the studies, not going to do anything right. or change their circumstance, going to change anything? And that's what's lacking in the entire That's video. a valid yeah. point. Can't automate this. Counterpoint. <laughs> They would Ooh. like to see WhiteHouse.gov be yeah. a storefront for Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> Tea tree oil soap. Oh, oh my gosh. Wonderful. Um, oh my gosh. Here's something else that people don't talk about. Despite automation, right, there's more probably than, than ever. Unemployment's at its lowest in 50 years. Record number of workers yeah. entering the workforce. We have a high labor force participation. Right? We have a job surplus. And the hard data shows us that the digital revolution has created far more jobs than it ever destroyed. Think about it. You have entire businesses that just create apps. Yeah. And then you have entire businesses that just help them code those apps. And now you have entire businesses, that even just taking into account Amazon, people think it's this one Leviathan. No. Well, it is, but there are a lot, it's basically a main portal as a digital storefront for all kinds of third-party sellers. It's sort yeah. of become the new general store. It all comes full circle. This is what people don't take into account. Now, I understand that some people will lose jobs in a, in, in a shifting economy, and yeah. we shouldn't be insensitive to that. But like of you course. said, we can't solve it by just being inefficient or giving people something that they have. Haven't earned. But Stephen, what about the laser disc manufacturers? Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, right? No VHS, one here is VHS, crying about the track. track. And, and no. you know, w your plan doesn't address those vintage, amazing, mm. historic 
passed on. Well, yeah, how far you're do you, selfish. How far do you take it? It's like, okay, what about the key grips on Route 66? They've probably been out of work for a while. Where's the soda fountain, guys? Uh, ah, the soda jerk. 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 The yeah, soda jerk. jerk. Nobody jerked a soda like Patrick. Whoa. Also, it turned out he was a pedophile. That surprised us. <laughs> soda <laughs> means Should've little students. Came out of nowhere. Came from that snail Woo. bitch at the library. Always left the trail when she went into the nonfiction section. Yeah. I tell ya. <laughs> Uh, another Sticky. consistent trend, by the way, is that get off my back. Uh, dangerous, <laughs> low-paying jobs have decreased while safer, yeah. high-paying jobs increase. Oh. So not only more jobs overall, also a better quality of life with the new jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a reasonable conversation to happen, but the problem is that technology, you, you can't stop it, right? People, I just thought of this. Um, Pol Pot had this idea uh, in the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Hey, yeah, Pol Pot. Right? He, yeah, no, his, like his idea was, <laughs> seriously, his idea was full labor. Everybody go out in the fields. Every smart person in the country was killed. Teachers, people had glasses, lawyers. Sorry, Bill, you guys are usually the first people to People had glasses. Uh, I wear contacts. They were considered <laughs> smart. Is that because you wore yeah. glasses? Somebody <laughs> called him four eyes yes. in France where he was in school, and he's like, oh, they must be smart. No, that's so, because of their they, masturbatory they, uh, they, behavioral they, patterns. <laughs> he's like, look, genius is like <laughs> this, right? Yeah. Yeah. They basically pushed everybody out into the, the rice fields to have them just make a, an agriculture economy that would rule the world world essentially and it miserably failed millions of people died yeah. because he tried to do that that's putting everybody at work that's full employment this idea has been floated before just check history yeah well i you know i was using canada and finland as uh, sort of benchmarks there you went straight to pole pot i did so well and you he know. said i was just thinking about this right now i, I puffed just, it to my yeah head. i know every time Gerald I says, says i just I, thought I, of this it's like don't yeah <laughs> no, I've, I've, I I know. I've, I've seen it i've been in those fields i've been in the high school where they killed people it was crazy but He's that was probably all... been to this asia more 70s. than half asian bill richmond yeah. has been to asia no yeah, but probably. Probably. gerald is a sex tourist i've been to a <laughs> <laughs> i am not <laughs> they both have different reasons i was wondering why I, my mom recognized I, me. <laughs> I actually helped set up a, a center to heck fight he has traffic. thailand pre-check no <laughs> just thailand yeah. no just thailand oh welcome back mr gerald welcome back mr see how this is no. I actually helped fight human trafficking, and you guys say I'm Oh, do you? Oh, good. I does. did. I helped set up a program in Siem Reap. Now I feel bad. What's it called? Siem Reap was the, the, the city in northern Cambodia. Yeah. Okay. And Sihanoukville, too, over on the coast. Siem Reap was actually the name of the lady boy. No, <laughs> it was not. Oh, no, Siem Reap. No, why you lie? He's I mispronouncing it. It's Siem Reap. <laughs> <laughs> no. Gosh. I can't get anywhere with I'm these so people. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. Ed G. Morgan Jr. I understand the appeal, by the way, um, to small government conservatives. This is one thing. So if you were to make this argument, and I've heard conservatives, I think even um, if you go back, I think uh, Friedman might have talked about this, or Hayek. Um, yeah. If you were to say, let's do away with all welfare programs, all social right. safety, let's do away with EBT, let's do away with Social Security, let's do away with Medicare, Medicaid, let's do away with welfare, let's do away with all of it and just put $1,000 into every American's pocket regardless of income. I understand the appeal because at that point it would save us money and you wouldn't have the kind of government incentives that create baby mamas. At that point, you actually right. have a government incentive to have a joint household. Oh. Okay, a mom right. in the house, 12000 A dad and a mom, 24000 I understand the appeal to it, but that's not what any Democrat is proposing. Right. Mm-hmm. This is this is very important to note. They're just saying we want to give people money, and by the way, if they're getting more in benefits already, we're going to let them keep those benefits. That's a problem. Yeah, nobody's going to make that change. And by the way, this program would cost that you would have to raise right additional three trillion dollars per year if everybody over eighteen received a thousand dollars a month, no matter their income level, and that's what the proposal is. I would sign up for the the Green New Deal much faster. That's much more plausible than doing that. There's no way three trillion dollars per year. Yeah, and that it sounds that, like that a lot. Will grow as as the as the population grows. I would okay. like to have a, a Yang on the show. I bet you we could probably. Oh, get him hold on. on, let me just. Well, I want to make sure I understand. I, I just assumed that this plan wouldn't be so stupid as to say we're going to take twelve hundred dollars from a bunch of people and then we're just going to give them twelve hundred dollars back. Like I'm. Pretty sure that's just like a check floating scheme. I mean, like and we're all make we're the doing interest. is just keeping the interest along huh. the way. Now I get it; they're going to take more from a higher, you know, there's going to higher tax rate, yeah. and then it's going to redistribute. <laughs> but but ultimately, again, well, like look at that figure: sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars of, of of benefit already, right? Yeah, right. And so you Transfers, add yeah. on top of that, so you have to yes. say that I'm going to increase by this kind of single or maybe low double digit change, and that's what's going to make a big difference. And and you just don't see the evidence yeah. for it. No, and what what they say is, well, we would count it as a credit. So in other words, if someone gets twelve thousand dollars a year, it's a thousand dollars a month. If someone gets a thousand dollars a month, twelve thousand a year, and they only get they get sixteen thousand dollars of transfers. Well, now they would only get four thousand dollars of transfers. Yeah, but that's gotcha. not. It's not like that's a wash. No. That's just. It's just worse. You All just have them sucks. getting the transfers, and now a bunch of people who don't need the thousand dollars getting a thousand dollars. Right. And this is, by the way, but we do have to get going. Anthony Kumia coming, yeah, coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
this is based on Marxist theory, which is all about the abuse of the worker at the hands of the capitalist bourgeoisie. See, don't, you don't need to get on my back on that one. Nice. Uh, that's because no comments. French Canadians. No comments. Let me ask, what do you think the result of having policies where those who work and contribute have their money taken from them and it's given to those who don't? How would that not eventually start a civil war? Honestly, it, you know who's going to win that war? The ones who've been contributing. Also, <laughs> mm. because they're the ones who have the guns, you would assume, well, not only because they can afford yeah. them, but they're the kinds yeah. of people who would purchase guns. Tends this is important. Yeah. It's not predicated on the idea that the wealthy don't pay enough, meaning people who have over 70, 80,000, they do, they pay far more. People in the bottom 20% pay a net negative, and this idea is that it would provide some kind of more autonomy, it doesn't. It creates slaves to the government who can then decide what you do and when you do with your money. I'm not on board. Uh, we have anything coming. We have to. Get, oh no, that's right. We have one more. Um, we have one more story. Uh, oh, no. Lena Dunham actually posted yeah. this photo encouraging people to love themselves. I think we have. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Uh, Gary. Yeah. Uh, Quarter black. Uh, what? What's happening? Uh oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, it, no. Uh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. He wasn't wearing pants the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm singing the original song now. This always happens. I'm listening to it and then I forget. All right. Shit. There's no man. It's just a show. What do you need besides a miracle? Guns. Lots of them. I'm Trinity. No, you're Pantelis. Cut! No, in this film he is playing Trinity. You're Trinity. Is that all you need? Yeah, this is the new Walther all steel frame Q5 match. Red dot ready. It is all I need. The all steel Walther Q5 match. It has good balance and a 5.6 pound trigger pull. Try the Walther. Apparently, this was popularized by Justin Bieber. Did you know that? Oh. Yeah, well, fellow Canadian him. there. Yeah, so there you go. Celine Dion and Justin Bieber. And you work, for actually, for with, with... Do you work for our next guest? Yeah, I do, actually, yeah. Okay. I work for him, yeah. It's not insulting for me to say that you work for him. <laughs> no, no, no. Why would it be that? <laughs> you are his subordinate, that you are his Greek Montreal subordinate. Oh. Uh, you know him from Compound Media. That's where you can watch Two Drink Minimum. Yeah. And right now, there is a promo code, actually, uh, Compound20 for 20% off. You can follow him on Twitter at The Kumia Show. Anthony Kumia, thank you for being back, sir. Thank you, Mr. Crowder. Uh, always a pleasure to do your program. I uh, for, right off the bat, I got to talk about the Walther. I love the Walthers. Yes. They they and and, and that one. Uh, I I have a PPKS, and uh, I've noticed one thing. In in my situation, I tend to date girls that are a little, what's the word? Insane. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. uh, this has I been well documented like, in the uh, press, by the way. So been, this isn't yes, gossip. Yes. Yeah. It really has. And I've noticed that the the Walther PBKS, they can barely pull that slide back. Yes. So it's a good gun to have around <laughs> if you don't want them shooting you. Right. Uh, it's, yeah. Okay. It's the equivalent to the Steve first, Martin's man. cork on his fork and dirty rotten right. scoundrels. Yes. yes. I just can't slide the first it. thing, the first thing you do with a girl when you first meet a girl and start going out with her, is hand her various pistols that you have and ask her to rack it. <laughs> the one she can't rack is the one you carry around with you. That's oh, okay. also why, by the way, everyone <laughs> everyone needs to avoid the Walther CCP. That was one of its design patents because it's a, a gas-delayed blowback. It. So that's what my mom yes. has. It's really easy to rack. So I stay yeah. away oh. from her when she's upset. Um, <laughs> first question, Anthony, do you dye your hair? Because I'm, you know, I'm going gray here, and it, you know, you've got the the Elvis Presley jet dark black. It looks like going on. <laughs> 
I I usually go to this place in New York City called John Sahag. Mm. Very classy mm. joint. Uh, but I decided to try a new place out on Long Island, and I get the cut, and yes, I do get it colored. But uh, <laughs> usually at John Sahag, they're a little more subtle about it. This one was... She just gave me the 1977 Tony Monero. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I after a little while, it starts growing. I get a few Pauly Walnut wings going here from The Sopranos. Well, that's not bad. Uh, it was, if it was between that and the Rich Little. How, by the way, how's your Reagan impression? <laughs> yes, Will, I, oh. mommy, I had to have my hair done. It's, well, yeah, that's actually it, better uh, than Rich Little and not as goodness. sad. <laughs> it, yeah, Rich Little. We, uh, me and Jim Norton uh, uh, call uh, Liam Neeson dyes his hair for all of his Taken movies, mm. and it looks like he literally just dipped his head in soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I saw and that. That's definitely <laughs> what I I got this time around was the soy. Well, sauce. it looks it looks good, and it's you know it's high not high and tight but tight. But I knew a guy at uh, at church one time who who he had fully gray hair and then came in and it was oh. bright oh, no. blonde. And the weird <laughs> thing is, you know, he had a decision to make. At some point where he's going, I'm just going to have to cross over and hope no one will notice. <laughs> yeah. Because he wasn't going just for Menning and then, a li no, it was just gray, Straight blonde. Up. And we had All to act as though we didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like Elton John did with his wig. Yes. He was bald. And then one day he just put this rat on his head and he's had it ever since. And we kind of got used to it. So Yeah, or like Steven Seagal with uh, hair plugs. Oh my goodness. You can watch yeah, his early yeah. movies. You're like, we've seen the film. Like, Sometimes yeah. they just paint it on. This they doesn't paint the edge right on. It doesn't require any digging. And it also changes based on what ethnicity he's claiming that day. <laughs> so like when he's saying, I'm, I'm Native American, you know, he gets the widow's peak. Then he's like, I used to hang oh, out right. with the blacks in Brooklyn. And then he gets a perm. And you're like, Stephen, <laughs> come on, bro. The so worst <laughs> thing is, I, I guess people have gotten the hair plugs or transplants or whatever you want to call it early on because they go bald uh, earlier in their uh, life. And then everything else falls out except for where they put the plugs in. And it's like, if you're in your 40s or something and you're thinning and want to get, get it taken care of, that's not a problem. If you're that guy that in high school started going bald, just accept it. Yeah, that's, that's I know. A rough, a it's rough also, start. they're taking, when you think about it, they're taking a gamble like Bosley when they're, you're basically a walking billboard because if you go out and they, they don't have control of whether you lose your hair or not, and you tell <laughs> everyone like, yeah, this is Bosley. Everyone, it's forever <laughs> more hair tonish. So I really, I would yeah. be very selective. It would be like the co the college combine for people to come yeah. in if I gave them plugs. Really think about it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You got a great head of hair on yourself there. Thank you. It's, it's getting the Mr. Fantastic going gray. So that's what I was asking. You know, my wife doesn't like the gray, but I feel, you know, I'm thinking like battle scars. from It's living the in a liberals question. doing yeah. it to you. It's the liberals making your hair gray. It for, turns gray overnight. Pretty much. Maniacs. Speaking of which, uh, now we have to get back on track. What do you make of Mueller's uh, press conference here this week? I know you've been talking oh about that quite God. a bit. This guy, we all had this amazing kind of preconceived notion about him that he was the the man behind the curtain the the uh, uh intelligent man in the cave on the hill or something because we didn't wait, hear wait, 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 hold on a second from. where do you yeah. come from that intelligent men live in caves on hills is this <laughs> dark crystal <laughs> it was a twilight zone episode oh that's oh. right that's okay it yes turned yeah. out, it turned out to be a computer yeah and muller turned and out to be the guy in the wing just <laughs> 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 yeah, and the guy that used to do the Schlitz commercials broke it or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a great episode. But, uh, yeah, we thought he was this guy of wisdom because he didn't say anything during the entire investigation. You didn't you see an interview with him, nothing. And then he comes out, and you're like, oh, no, he's just another one of these idiots like you see in Congress and paraded in front of us to give these interviews. And he's like, all right, here's what it was all about. We didn't find him guilty. We didn't find him not guilty. Yes. All right, take yes. it easy. I'm out of here. No questions. I, yeah. I quit. <laughs> right. And, it's like, the first question, isn't that your job? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And people don't seem to understand what a prosecutor's job is, especially during an investigation like this. It's not a trial. He is just getting information to so the prosecution can present a case. There's no rebuttal from a defense attorney or any, mm -hmm. rebutting any of this evidence that he has. So in all of that, in all those two years, he couldn't find anything. He didn't find anything. But yesterday he had to pump out a little bit of uh, crap in his speech about uh, Trump and the fact that he wasn't exonerated, which means nothing in our legal system. Right. But to try to tell liberals what the legal system <laughs> is about is a whole other thing. Well, because Trump sent out, a, sent out a tweet. Yeah. 
Yeah, they don't even understand the most basic of uh, of rights that we have in this country. Right. Never mind understanding prosecutorial uh, uh, ethics and and w- w- rules, whatever you're supposed to yeah. do. So, uh, and, and then the my favorite part of this whole thing is watching the clowns, the candidates for the Democratic nomination, that are saying, "Well, it's clear as day that he was <laughs> saying that." Congress now needs to pick up the ball and and immediately start impeachment proceedings. Right. Nothing was clear, by the way. No, nothing, nothing at all. Entire investigation has ever been clear. And don't you think they have a motive <laughs> that they want Trump removed because they cannot possibly beat him? It's like it's like every NFL team wanting to impeach the Patriots <laughs> at the beginning of the season. Now, of course, you're not going to win. So they want to get rid of him. So when you hear any of these clowns talking about Trump and how he needs to be impeached, there's an ulterior motive here. Right. They yeah. want they want to at least have somewhat of a chance uh, in, in the uh, presidential race. And it could backfire, by the way, if they try to impeach him, it could end up being worse. And I know there are different mm-hmm. theories on that, but I do wonder, like you said, we really didn't hear from Mueller a whole lot. And so he sort of became this kind, kind of a Rorschach test. He sort of became this empty tablet that everyone just kind of copy pasted onto him what, what they wanted. Well, he hasn't said anything. Therefore, there's clearly evidence. And like you said, when he came out, it wasn't clear. But 30 something million dollars later, how many subpoenas, hundreds of subpoenas and witnesses? Yeah. Do you think he Gosh. didn't say anything during that time because he was just at his desk going, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's what I feel like. And then he's like, I have a press conference to do. I have to. Yeah. I don't have anything. It's like you wake up. You haven't studied for the test and it's the day of. And if you go to over two years with an investigation and you put out this report that is supposedly concise and has everything in it that they they got as far as evidence and interviews and testimony, everything. Why would he have to give the uh, Democrats this little, hey, by the way, guys, I really mean impeach him. Right. (laughs) Nothing is in the report that says this guy should be impeached. There's nothing in there that says he committed any crimes. Right. Oh, but there's, but it doesn't say he didn't. Oh, geez. Right. Again, our legal system you, doesn't run. Your that sole way. job was to determine whether he committed crimes, Mueller, <laughs> yeah. and then pass <laughs> it along job. to someone who would be a prosecutor. He's like, oh, I'll punt to Congress. Wink, wink. What? What is <laughs> right. happening? Uh, yeah. Th- th- then it becomes some secret code in some nine-minute uh, speech that he gave. That all the Democrats and and all these news channels of fake news, fake news, right. seems so. You see them; they're all back there. See them? They uh, they're the ones that are now going crazy over everything he said. They're they're uh, trying to decode it. Yeah, there's nothing to decode. Read yeah. the report. Right. That's all he said. He said the report is my testimony. Right. Well, it's kind of like the great. You know, I don't expect everyone to read 400 something pages with the report, but the Green New Deal is a great example of that. Everyone was talking about it in the media. We just read it on yeah. the channel. We just read. It's five pages, and that's by the way printed in large font. So we just <laughs> yeah. read it, and immediately was demonetized and restricted <laughs> on YouTube. Just reading the Green New Deal, yeah. uh, and it had like it has like close to a million plays because oh, we're yeah. just saying we are just going to read it. Yep. That's all. And it's so laughable. Um, all right, yeah. speaking of laughable, let me ask this. You know, Howard Stern has been talking about this recently, and I want to get to him in, in, in a second because he's been on some interpret it as an apology tour. But he did sort of lament the change in um, the media landscape today from radio, what it used to be with having only callers, and now today with social media, how there's more sort of, you know, scrutiny. What do you, what's your opinion on that? You know, I've sort of, I did Fox News and radio, but not really. This has always been more so my milieu along with, with, with stand-up. You were here for the whole transition. Do you feel there's more pressure? Oh do you feel God. there's more freedom? How would you compare it today? Uh, when I first got into radio, uh, they would sit you down, the GM, the general manager, the PD, program director. They would sit you down and say, here are the... FCC rules. Right. Here's our lawyers. They will tell you what the rules are, and you must adhere to them. If you don't, and there's a complaint, we have lawyers that will field all the FCC. It was always the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, sure. the government. Those are the people you had to worry about. Nothing else. Oh, you'd get some groups, but for the most part, if you stayed within the lines, you would be okay. Right. But it was always they, – they wouldn't complain directly. If you, you upset – uh, a gay group or a woman's group or, or anything, minority group, they would complain to the FCC because that's mm. what they did. Right. Uh, and, and then you'd have to field that complaint. They were the monster. Now it's everybody. 
everyone is now the FCC and can levy a fine on you, if I may use the word fine. Well, you can actually. Pantelis knows Trudeau, Justin Trudeau wants to do that uh, on Twitter. He wants the rest of the oh, world yeah. to follow yeah. Canada's hate speech guidelines. Right. Yeah. Well, Which Canada's insane. pretty nuts with that whole thing. Yeah, we sucks. think that border, uh, you know, you leave your First Amendment behind when you cross that border going yeah. north. They're proud of it. Uh, but it, it's it's odd because now the FCC is nothing. When was the last time you heard anybody that got an FCC complaint on the radio? It just doesn't happen anymore. That's true. What happens now is people get offended and they start uh, uh, tweeting and getting in touch with sponsors and they cut out the entire FCC thing, which actually used to litigate with the station lawyers and whatnot. And uh, they would actually discuss First Amendment and things like that. Now – you're done. And if you uh, get some heat and people, uh, enough people bitch and complain, you're done. You lose your career. So, it's you, think it's, so you think it's worse now than in the age of terrestrial radio? It is so much worse. We can't play some of the things we did on regular FM radio back in the late 90s uh, on satellite radio. We weren't allowed to play it. Because it was too offensive wow. Wow. on regular radio, you know. You know, the last time I got in was, trouble with the FCC, it wasn't really the FCC, but this was a terrestrially syndicated when it was a podcast to, I, I don't know, like 20-something stations. Not many. And uh, we were putting on the podcast fake tornado warnings, you know, that, <laughs> but we'd have like oh, Lena Dunham warnings and uh, Velociraptor <laughs> yeah. warnings. So it was just like fake sketches because we had to fill commercial breaks uh, on podcasts. We were sort of bridging this gap. And we got an email and someone from the station said, yeah, they're not sure. They know it's illegal if you do it on air and radio, but you only inserted this into the podcast portion, but they want to see if they need to treat it like a, another syndicating network. And then I never heard back from them. <laughs> so that was my yeah. first and only experience with them. Yeah, they get upset with the emergency uh, announcements. And uh, I think that's what the... FCC's only handling now what they were initially supposed to handle. Are you broadcasting on the right frequency? Is it the right uh, power coming out of the transmitter? Because uh, they don't care about content anymore. And I think that has to do with uh, traditional terrestrial radio stations don't put jocks on anymore that do anything that could get them in trouble. Right. They're so petrified of personality-driven radio now that they just say, shut up, read the liners, play the music, and that's it. Yeah. So it's you're not garbage. getting that kind of controversial radio anymore. I, yeah, I auditioned once for a national morning radio show. This wasn't that long ago. It was in Ben Shapiro's old house, actually, oh, wow. in, uh, in, in his apartment. And uh, they said, we don't want you to inject any personality, just read the news briefing. It was the worst audition ever. I was so bad. I walked out and I just remember my head was low. I said, I didn't get it. And Ben, I'm quite certain mm -hmm. that I embarrassed you for putting me up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you didn't get it, but Ryan Seacrest did. Yes, so. Ryan Seacrest Damn. did. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> oh, we, we do have to get going. Let me ask you this, because this is some contribution. I'd like to have you back to talk about it. You know, Howard Stern, is, his sure. newest book is out. Some people have said it's kind of an apology tour, where now he's saying, and I shouldn't use yeah. words like retarded. And he was a shock jock. Do you think it's a natural evolution of a guy who's no longer 28? Or do you think it's really uh, more so based on acquiescing to what's needed to survive, like you were just talking about. There is absolutely a growing uh, phase that you go through. Uh, and I think when you, you hit your 50s, I guess, you really start thinking, well, everything I did is fine, but if I did it now, it would be pretty creepy. Right. Uh, especially where girls are involved. He did a lot of sexual stuff and right. a lot of yeah. stuff. And he was mean to a lot of celebrities, but it was hilarious for the listeners. But uh, I understand growing out of that and wanting to, to, uh, to change your show, maybe, and personality or whatever. But you can't disavow what you did. Right. And you can't take people like Gilbert Gottfried, who were amazing on your show and kind of built you up. He had a lot of cast of uh, a lot of players that built him up to be the Howard Stern he, he became. And then to just say, well, no, we'll never have them on again. We'll never replay it. We'll never acknowledge we did that. Mm -hmm. He was on The View the other day, and it was hilarious just that he's on The View. Yeah. And uh, one of the one of the Yentas sitting next to him said something to the effect of, <laughs> can you believe Howard Trump rates women from 1 to 10? And Howard's sitting there, I'm, I'm watching going, have you watched his show over the course of the year where he took Never. a laser pen yeah. and, and had a nude woman standing in front of him, put it on her hip and went, well, you're a little fat here, honey. That's uh, a good Howard. You lose, you lose a couple of pounds there, honey. <laughs> but he, he, yeah. They have no idea. And he doesn't want anyone to really know that's who he was. I don't even think they know that Donald Trump rated women on his show. It was on his show that <laughs> no, Donald Trump yeah. rated women. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> it was on his show. So I think he is doing this apology tour. If you get a chance, watch uh, watch his appearance on um, Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show. At the end, he, he wants to give away a book, and they show the camera open on Times Square, and he's able to talk to them on the big billboard. He led them in a sing-along and dance-along of the Hokey Pokey with oh. zero irony. I was mortified watching this growing up with Howard since he came to NBC in 84. Right. Watching that was one of the saddest things I've ever seen. So I yeah. guess you could change, but uh, oof. That was kind of like me with uh, David Letterman in about the last four years where I would tune in and go, oh man, this is, it's no longer funny. He's really, really angry and so far left that, yes! that I can't do it. And it doesn't mean that he, it doesn't mean he was not hilarious and groundbreaking. Right. I just was saying, this is a season where I'm going to have to ignore it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe if it happens slowly, it's almost like the guy you're talking about in church with the blonde hair. <laughs> yes. All of a sudden, Howard, you know, becomes becomes this guy that wants to be loved and uh, apologizing to everybody. It's just a little shocking to his uh, true right. old time. It's fans. like I'm not going to use the word retarded anymore, demean minorities. Like you had a midget farting on a stripper <laughs> yesterday. That was <laughs> yesterday, and it was in the <laughs> afternoon. It was the post show. Uh, right. all, yeah. all right, we're, we're, people can catch your show. It's Compound Media. Uh, is it, it's compoundmedia.com? Dot com, yeah. .com, yeah. And the yeah. promo Four code to, is uh, Compound20. 4 to 6 uh, p.m. Uh, East, uh, Eastern Time. Um, yeah, Monday through Thursday. And we have a bunch of shows here on the platform. So, uh, yeah, go to compoundmedia.com. It'll give you all the info you need. Absolutely. Pantelis is over there. Hey, uh, Mr. Camilla, thank you so much for, for being here. And uh, I don't mind the Moreno. Keep it up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, David. Open your mind. Let us begin our quest to find the new sound. As we cross over the Red Sea, we find it. The kingdom of the House of Saud a place Allah referred to simply as home. A place that tells you to slow down, remember your prayers, and to cover up your neck, head, and upper and lower torso. A place where Sharia law ensures that all men are men, girls are girls who can't drive, and a is all but a distant, vanished memory. A place somewhere over the sunset above the Red Sea, we hear the laughter of young boys, the lamentations of infidels, and the bleeding of goats. It's a place where the number of public beheadings is surpassed only by the funding of global terrorism and gross abuse of basic human rights. Pure Saudi Arabia. Sponsored by Mohammed bin Salman and the Tourism Board of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Louder with Crowder Ranger Panties. Buy yours today at louderwithcrowdershop.com. What do we have here? It's Castle Mug Club. And it's mine. Not so fast, evil YouTube overlord. Steven! You too can pit Steven against YouTube overlord playing for the power of Castle Mug Club. Oh no, YouTube is escaping. Hopper the battle dog. Dad, you saved the castle. Castle Mug Club from the masters of the internet collection. Steve N and YouTube Overlord each sold separately. For more adventures, join Mug Club at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. $99 annually, $69 for students, veterans, or active military. Like, uh, did you miss the movie? Uh, I just dropped my very oh, expensive was, uh, seven alley pipe. Commando, did you, did you ever see Commando? Were. Yeah, the movie Commando. Do you remember when Arnold was that where he was in the swamp yeah. and he was breathing through a reed? That wouldn't work. No, but you know how I know it wouldn't work because I thought I would do a breathing contest, an underwater contest, hold your breath contest Smart. with Smart. my brother, and I cheated by having a little blade of grass and I lost the contest horribly. <laughs> I really thought it would work. <laughs> just water immediately just goes straight it into just that. Just immediately. You, you just don't get enough air through that. Yeah. What was um, that yesterday? It, it was, it was re more recently than I would oh. care to admit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
It was post moved to the United States. Okay. <laughs> I thought I'd put one over on him, and I did not. Thank you so much again to Anthony Kumia. Um, our apologies. Uh, Ted Cruz will be here, I think, uh, was it June? Sometime, sometime yeah. soon. And uh, we'll keep you updated on the, uh, the move. Next week, we have a bunch of stuff coming. I don't know. We have, uh, oh, we, have uh, we have some super videos in the oh, works yeah, here. We'll a lot of stuff going stuff. on. Um, all right. So this is one, this is kind of, uh, I'll get a little personal later on here, which is always tough. It's always tough to be kind of vulnerable in these segments because, you know, it's the internet, like we just talked about with Kumia, and uh, uh, most of you are terrible. <laughs> so we've been talking about this, we had Daniel Cormier on the show, who's the heavyweight champion in the world, and we've had a lot of, you've heard me talk about this, we have a lot of people who are excellent in their field on this show. And we do the life advice segments, the tough love segments for those who are Mug Club members, for those who aren't. You know, it's a little bit of a longer show where we just take some of your emails and try and help people out. Most of the time, we don't. Um, but I noticed, I've definitely noticed a common thread and a question that we get a lot is uh, a lot of people find themselves in a rut. And they'll often ask for the best way to find motivation, the best way to sort of find inspiration to turn things around. So let me tell you, you're not going to like this. Um, here's the fact most, sometimes it's not there, most of the time it's not there. Now that's not to say that those who find themselves in a rut are hopeless, far from it, so follow me here a little bit. What I'm about to offer is, is just the, pro probably the exact opposite of the solution that you were hoping for, but it is a solution. Many people, I think a lot of folks, uh, in my experience, I think that successful people are very, by, by their nature, they're very driven. You know, that's what we're taught to believe. They're driven, they're motivated all the time, that's what makes them elite. When in reality, and I, I've realized this in talking with people like Daniel Cormier or Thomas Sowell or, or Brian Shaw, anyone who's excellent, um, in reality, these people, just like you, they often don't feel motivated or inspired. Usually, it's the 80-20 rule. Successful people are successful because they get up and they do it anyway in spite of that. And again, I've had the luxury of interviewing the best of the best. Daniel Cormier, heavyweight champion of the world, right? Brian Shaw, four times world's strongest man. Thomas Sowell, I don't know how many books he's written. After the first several dozen, I lose track. <laughs> and when I've asked any of them what separates them from the pack, invariably they all answer. It, it, and it might surprise you, it might not, work ethic. And you know what, here's one thing we were talking about earlier this week, there's kind of a bell curve with talent. When you're young and you're playing sports, the, the sort of d determining factor, right, is talent at that point. It really determined, it's determined by when you, uh, how, how you grow, how quickly you grow, when you hit your growth spurt, that determines whether you advance in, in most endeavors. Athletics, academia, they thought I was retarded until I was in the fourth grade. Turns out I just couldn't learn geography and math in French. Thanks, Quebec government. <laughs> They still might think, my wife still thinks I could be retarded. I'll get back to that. <laughs> there is a bell curve though with talent, okay? You hear a, a lot that work ethic only takes you so far, and that's true. Um, but that talent is the great divider is not necessarily true, particularly once you get past a certain point. Let me, for example, I'm never going to be able to jump like LeBron James, right? Why? Oh, because I'm not 6'8 with purely fast twitch muscle fibers. This is not LeBron type, okay? You would not cast me, if I saw the character break down, it would not say strong, silent LeBron James type. It would be like maybe early James Cromwell type. <laughs> early young Richard Jenkins type. That's what I would get. I'd be a character, side character. So yes, let me get back to the point. There are divisions of talent, okay? That's what takes you to the center of the bell curve. Now in this case, keep in mind, I'm applying the bell curve to professionals, to elites. Um, then something interesting happens, okay? Once you've weeded everybody out and you're down to the top 1% of 1%, and that's usually what we're referring to when we mean elite, there's still a gap. There are still the NBA All-Stars, for example, the Dream Team, and then there's Michael Jordan. There are still top-ranked heavyweight fighters in the world who could beat anybody else on the planet, and then there's Daniel Cormier, who throws them around like a child. There's still world's strongest men, for example, second through 10th place, and then Brian Shaw winning four years in a row. And the widening of the, of the gap, once you get past that bell curve, is no longer due to talent. It goats back goats. It, it reverts back to work ethic. And I've only realized this recently in having enough of a sample size of interviewing the elite of the elite. And I would say not only work ethic, but work intellect, working smarter, not just harder. So many people, this is something, we, we get so many emails like this, you know about this in the life advice, they're looking mm -hmm. for the skies to part, the light to shine down, God to show you your purpose, or that moment of insp inspiration, motivation to hit you. Sometimes it does, okay? And that's great when it does. Sometimes it doesn't. There's a lot of variability. I'll tell you where there isn't a whole lot of variability. I'll tell you where there's one constant. While you were waiting for your sign, for your motivation, there was a guy or girl 
who wasn't. There was a guy who didn't feel like it, who wasn't motivated, and he worked at it anyway. He wrote another book, Thomas Sowell. He got another training session in, Daniel Cormier. Um, let me kind of explain this because I, I want to preface this. This is something that's pretty personal, but I, I don't want what I'm about to say after this to seem egotistical. Um, I've kind of alluded to this before, but I've, uh, I've struggled with depression in my life. Uh, clinical depression. It's been something that's just been on my plate. Everyone has their cross to bear. I'm not saying that it's more of a burden or less of a burden than other people. And, you know, I've talked about sort of the fibromyalgia thing. They go hand in hand with the chronic pain. Uh, but I tell you this for two reasons, okay? People only bring up, number one, depression or uh, mental health when a celebrity offs themselves or when it's politically expedient to discuss mental health care and needing to destigmatize it, which ironically, to me, makes it more stigmatized. Um, and by the way, to a degree, it should, in that it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing to struggle with depression. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, okay? But it does bother me when people come out and say, oh yeah, after Heath Ledger, I certainly struggled with it. We need to destigmatize it. Well, let me ask you this, when things aren't bad, when there isn't some famous celebrity who was taken to, when are you talking about it? Because that makes it seem abnormal to people. And it's not a good thing. People need help, they don't need to be coddled. The second reason I bring this up, not because I'm elite or trying to say, you could be me too. But in, you know what, in the spirit of objectivity, we do a lot of content here at this show. And I guess by definition, being the top conservative channel ever uh, makes us elite, but that's only because of the dearth of talent on the right. You know, it's certainly nothing compared to people like, like John Oliver or Jimmy Fallon. We're grateful for everyone who tunes in. But if I can toot the horn of the, the team, that intro that you saw today required days of working on the song. Just writing the lyrics, days of recording the song, mixing it, then performing it with a lip sync on a green screen with a scratch track, hours of wardrobe makeup, then days of editing, comping. All the while, uh, I've still had to host, and we've had to work on a show four days a week, and then some for the last several weeks. And this week we were taping until midnight out in the middle of a field covered in blood corn syrup with mosquitoes around us to do a Goodfellas parody that you'll see next week, and then the workload starts again. So am I elite? No. Uh, but I'm at least as accomplished as the next guy. And I will say the team here of people, as a unit, I would say they're elite. And that's why I bring it, the clinical depression is something I've been struggling with for a long time. So I bring it up to show you that even though I'm nothing uh, necessarily special, what you see is a lot of work and I've been doing it anyway. So I want you to know when you wake up and you don't feel like it, understand that's most people. Just do something, anything. Get out of bed, get out of your head, and the reasons that you're hearing through that noggin telling you why not, why you can't, and just do. Otherwise, you will have to live with for the rest of your life knowing that while you were scrolling through Pinterest looking for a motivating quote and posters with kittens that say hang in there, there was that person out there who was doing it in spite of having no motivation at all. And guess what? That person will be elite. That person invariably will be better than the rest. And if you don't follow that kind of, that kind of a blueprint yourself, that person will be better than you, and you'll have to accept it, and it'll be of your own making. All right, see you next week. Hope that helps. Maybe not. It only takes